Nonetheless, the standard for the media, it's new. It's a new standard. The media are overt partisans on behalf of Joe Biden. It is insane. NBC News reporter Ben Collins, he actually tweeted out, reminder for your uncle, the press can't cover Hunter's hard drive because we don't have access to it. This isn't a WikiLeaks thing. One guy has access to it. He wouldn't give it to us. And now he's in quasi hiding because he got caught in a hotel room with Borat's daughter, right? Talking about Rudy Giuliani not turning over the hard drive to NBC, for example. But weird, because uh, I don't remember you having any access to any of the underlying material in nearly any of the stories you've reported about Russiagate for literally years on end. So the standard is magically morphing. It is magically changing. My favorite line of the weekend actually came courtesy of Thomas Ridd, a professor of strategic studies at Johns Hopkins University School of Advanced International Studies. He had a piece in the Washington Post. This is a direct quote. You ready? We must treat the Hunter Biden leaks as if they were a foreign intelligence operation, even if they probably aren't. Even if they probably aren't. So now we have to just ignore them and not report on them, even if they're legit, because we have to work under the assumption that anything said bad about Democrats must be Russian disinformation. All of which allows Joe Biden to simply treat reporters like garbage when he is asked about it. Here was Joe Biden over the weekend being asked about Hunter Biden and just cutting him dead. Questions of controversy continues to tell you about Hunter Biden, your son's... Uh, there is no controversy about my son. Doing it's all a lie. It's a flat lie because the president has nothing else to run on. If you notice, and while American people are talking about what's happening to their families, he has no plan. In the debate, he has no plan. Everything from the Wall Street Journal, over every other major... No news outlet has said what he's saying is simply not true about my son. But it's, it's classic Trump. Classic Trump. Okay, except for the fact that um, actually the emails are real and the texts are real and people are asking legit questions about them. But the good news is he can just shout COVID in masks and everybody goes, oh, well, he knows the solution, guys. Everything will be better tomorrow if that evil malevolent force Donald Trump is out of office. Again, all of this also allows Joe Biden to escape from the fact that he is not with it. Okay, now, he can get, this is not to say he can't get through a sentence. He can get through a sentence. He can get through several sentences. He can't get through like a full paragraph without starting to lose it. Okay, over the weekend, over and over and over, Joe Biden was just gaffing all over the place. Now, one of these gaffes would have killed any other candidate. Seriously. Any other can Mitt Romney, you remember, what about your gaffes? People yell yelling at Mitt Romney as though Mitt Romney were half as senile as Joe Biden appears to be on the verge of being. Okay, I'm old enough to remember when people took gaffes Seriously, so long as they were coming from Republicans. I mean, we still remember all of George W. Bush's gaffes, right? Edumacation. Remember that one? Edumacation. We still remember Dan Quayle misspelling potato, right? These were major gaffes. Joe Biden mixes up which office he is running for. He mixes up which state he is in. He mixes up the candidate he is running against. Over the weekend, he suggested he was running against George. I assume he means Bush, not George of the jungle. But guess what? Bush has been out of office since 2008. Here is Biden mistaking Trump for Bush. This is the most consequent, not because I'm running, but because who I'm running against. This is the most consequential election uh, in, a, in a long, long, long time. And the character of the country, in my view, is literally on the ballot. What kind of country we're going to be? Four more years of George, uh, George uh, he uh, is going to find ourselves in a position where if uh, Trump gets elected, uh, we're going to be uh, we're going to be in a different world. That wasn't the only one. Then Joe Biden bragged about having the most expensive voter fraud organization in history. Again, these are these are gaffes that would any other candidate, these would all be headlines. But it's protect the precious time now, right? We're in the final days of the election. Protect the precious, even if that precious is a uh, doddering coot who is not going to be in office for four years, let alone eight. Here is Joe Biden. We're in a situation where we have put together and you guys did, did it for our administration, the president Obama's administration before this. We have put together, I think, the most extensive and inclusive voter fraud organization in the history of American politics. That's exciting. He's put together the most extensive voter fraud organization in the history of American politics. You want to get those conspiracy theorists going, that would be the way that you do it. And again, the good news is that for Democrats, nobody is going to ever, ever have to answer a tough question because they're Democrats. I hope you enjoyed that clip from The Ben Shapiro Show. If you did, go ahead and hit the subscribe button so you stay up to date on all of our future content.